Welcome to our world news program. Today, we're diving into some fascinating stories from around the globe. First up, Paris is gearing up for the first ever Olympic breakdancing competition, a monumental event that highlights the evolution of breakdancing from New York City streets to the global stage. With 16 B-boys and 16 B-girls from over a dozen countries, this competition promises to be a thrilling showcase of skill and creativity. However, there are concerns about the sport losing its cultural uniqueness as it gains mainstream recognition. Still, many in the breakdancing community are excited to see their art form celebrated worldwide. Next, we turn our attention to China, where the state-run funeral industry is under intense scrutiny. Anti-corruption investigators have uncovered numerous cases of malpractice, including illegal tips and overcharging for funeral services. This crackdown aims to address the corruption that has plagued the industry for years, tarnishing its reputation and exploiting grieving families. The investigation has revealed just how lucrative the funeral business can be, with billions spent annually on services and products. Finally, let's talk about Wu Yani, the Chinese hurdler who's making waves not just for her athletic prowess but also for her vibrant personality and unique style. Wu recently clinched gold in the women's 100-meter hurdles at the China National Track and Field Championships, setting an Asian best for the season. Despite facing setbacks like a disqualification at the Asian Games, Wu remains focused and upbeat, capturing the hearts of many on social media. She's set to compete in the 2024 Paris Olympics, and fans are eagerly watching her journey. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories and more. CNN, as a DJ spins music, the athletes twist, whirl and leap, each move a dizzying mix of fancy footwork and contorted limbs. It might seem more like an art form than a sport, but breakdancing, known professionally as breaking, is making its Olympics debut this month in Paris. Breaking has been flourishing on the streets of New York and other U.S. cities since the 1970s, but Paris marks its first time its athletes, known as B-boys and B-girls, will freestyle their moves on perhaps the world's biggest stage. The two-day breaking competition this Friday and Saturday features competitors from more than a dozen countries, including China, France, Japan, the Netherlands, South Korea, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and the United States. The games will expose breaking to a wider audience, said Victor Montalvo, nicknamed B-Boy Victor, of the U.S., who's been called the Michael Jordan of breaking and is a favorite in Paris to bring home a medal. It's reaching a different audience, a global audience, an audience that thought breaking was dead or was never there, Montalvo told CNN and Espanol in a recent interview. Breaking has been a competitive form of street performance for decades, part of the hip-hop culture that emerged on the streets of New York City five decades ago. It started as a form of creative expression among Black and Latino youth and is considered one of the key elements of hip-hop, along with rapping, DJing, and graffiti art. Breaking was a pivotal part of the hip-hop movement, combining dance, music, and urban culture, says Sergei Nifontov, Secretary General of the World Dance Sport Federation. Driven by the growing popularity of hip-hop, Breaking burst into the mainstream in the mid-80s thanks to media coverage and appearances in such movies as Wild Style, Beat Street, Breakin and its famously titled sequel, Breakin, 2, Electric Boogaloo. The growth of the internet and social media later spread the art form further by connecting dancers worldwide. Breaking also got exposure in recent years on reality TV shows such as So You Think You Can Dance? The art form provided minority youth with a form of self-expression about their struggles and larger social issues, said Richard M. Cooper, an expert on hip-hop culture. Cooper said that although breaking was a cornerstone of the hip-hop movement, its roots can be traced decades earlier back to Africa. While breakdancing is the more commonly known term, the original b-boys and b-girls coined the word breaking as a tribute to the vigorous dance battles that happened during breaks in a track. The Olympics adopted the same name to honor its culture and history and preserve its authenticity. The International Olympic Committee has been searching for ways to attract younger audiences, and breaking fits this trend given its cultural relevance and dynamic nature. Officials introduced breaking at the 2018 Summer Youth Olympic Games in Argentina, where its viewership hit 1 million, dwarfing the audience for other sports. As breaking makes its Olympics debut, Cooper said a part of him fears it will lose some of the cultural qualities that make it a unique art form, but he's also happy that breaking is getting the recognition it deserves. South China Morning Post, China's state-run funeral industry has become a fresh target for the country's anti-corruption investigators, with a string of cases across the country in recent months. In the latest case, Communist Party disciplinary investigators in Huainan, Anhui province, announced on Friday that they had detained Zhang Duo from the Panji District Funeral Home 4, suspected of serious violations of discipline and law. The watchdog did not elaborate on Zhang's alleged offenses but the phrase is a euphemism for corruption. 
Most of China's funeral parlors are managed under the direct supervision of civil affairs authorities and are monopolies with a reputation for opaque pricing and substandard services, which in turn is fertile ground for corruption. Zhang's detention came three months after disciplinary authorities in the neighboring city of Wuhu launched corruption investigations into Jiang Junsheng, the director of its municipal funeral service administrative office, as well as into Zhang's deputy, Ren Yongsheng. Staff at the Municipal Funeral Center in Benqi, in the northeastern province of Liaoning, were also the targets of disciplinary action in May, after customers accused them of asking for illegal tips. Across the border in Jilin province, Lu Wanjun, former party secretary and director of the Huinan County Funeral Home, was stripped of party membership and job in May for charging families for services that were never provided. Lu was handed over to criminal prosecutors and will face trial. Dozens of civil affairs bureaus, from Wanzhou in the southwest to Qidong in the east, have called meetings to try to rectify the irregularities in the funeral industry. The meetings dovetail with President Xi Jinping's call in January to the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, the top political disciplinary and anti-corruption body, to fight corruption that directly affects the people. About 258 billion yuan, 36 billion US dollars, was spent on funerals and associated services such as tombs in 2020 according to a report by Chinese investment bank Citic. A 2015 investigation by state news agency Xinhua found that many funeral homes were making extra money selling overpriced urns and funeral clothes for the deceased, and the civil affairs officials in charge of the operations were taking a cut of the sales. In 2015, the former director and former deputy director of a funeral home in Guangzhou were found to have partnered with a paper coffin supplier over seven years, pocketing more than 250,000 yuan in bribes each. Some funeral homes were also found to have given out fake cremation certificates, while allowing the deceased's family to bury the body, a traditional practice now banned in most parts of the country because of the limited available land. The Xinhua report said a few staff members at the Inan County Funeral Home in Shandong Province used straw, quilts, and plastic to make fake corpses for cremation, helping more than 60 families to obtain fake cremation certificates, and receiving more than 200,000 yuan in bribes. South China Morning Post, at the 2024 China National Track and Field Championships, local hero Wu Yani clinched the gold medal in the women's 100-meter hurdles. Not only did the 27-year-old improve her personal record by 0.02 seconds, she also set an Asian best for the season in this event. On Chinese social media, Wu is one of the most popular and talked-about athletes, not only for her remarkable performances on the track but also her tattoos, race day makeup and outspoken personality which often clashes with conventional expectations. Born in 1997 in Zigong, a city in southwestern Sichuan province, Wu was an exceptionally restless child. To channel her boundless energy, her mother enrolled her in dance classes. Wu's journey into track and field began in the fifth grade when she was spotted during a sports competition held in Neijiang, Sichuan. From there, she went to get further training in Chengdu, the capital city of Sichuan. In 2012, after being picked up by Yang Hui, a coach from the Beijing Sport University hurdles team, Wu began her career in 100-meter hurdles. Seven years later, her notable performances earned her a spot on China's national athletics squad. Yang once described Wu as, made for hurdling, during an interview with local Chinese media, adding, she possesses many of the qualities that define a great athlete. Wu soon began amassing a slew of hurdling medals in various national competitions. She claimed gold in the 100 meter at China's Youth Games in 2015 and secured third place at the 13th National Games two years later with a time of 13.36 seconds. Her ascent continued as she rose to the elite ranks of Chinese female hurdlers, winning gold at the National Athletics Championships in 2018, 2020, and 2021. At the 14th National Games in 2021, however, Wu missed out on the title, earning a silver medal as compatriot Lin Yue took the gold. Wu rose to the pinnacle of her career after earning a silver medal in the women's 100-meter hurdles in the Faisu World University Games, held in Chengdu in August 2023. She set her personal best of 12.76 seconds during the race, which also secured her a place in Paris. During last year's Asian Games in Hangzhou, Wu came under the spotlight after being disqualified for a false start. Reflecting on these moments, Wu described the 2021 National Games and the Asian Games as the worst moments of my athletic career. But Wu said those setbacks introduced a more playful attitude toward racing. These false start incidents, along with her tattoos and cosmetics during the race, thrust her into the center of online controversies and even criticism. Addressing the doubts about her makeup during races, Wu told local media, I'll perform better when all the focus is on me. 
I think it's normal for girls to wear makeup, and we can't take away a person's right to look beautiful. Away from the track, Wu has found popularity on social media with more than 3.7 million followers on her official Douyin account. But Wu also distanced herself from labels like Internet Celebrity. After earning a place at the Paris Olympics, Wu's preparation was far from smooth. After the Asian Games debacle, she fell short of expectations at the Diamond League meet held in Xiamen, finishing in a disappointing 10th place with a time of 13.04 seconds. But Wu has shown she can bounce back from setbacks during her impressive pre-Olympic form. Before winning gold and setting a personal best at the recent national track and field championships, she secured back-to-back -back victories in the 100-meter hurdles at the World Continental Tour held in Osaka and Tokyo, Japan in May. Associated Press, in a tragic incident marking Australia's second fatal crocodile attack in a month, human remains were discovered in a massive crocodile suspected of killing a fisherman. The victim, a 40-year-old tourist from New South Wales, fell into the Annan River in Queensland and never resurfaced. Wildlife rangers later killed a 4.9-meter crocodile with distinctive snout scars, matching witness descriptions. The remains found inside the crocodile are believed to be the missing man, pending further testing. This incident follows the death of a 12-year-old girl in the Northern Territory and marks the third fatal crocodile attack in Australia this year, underscoring the growing danger as crocodile populations surge since becoming a protected species in the 1970s. CNN, Chinese scientists have made a groundbreaking discovery by finding water molecules in lunar soil samples brought back by the Chang'e 5 probe. Unlike previous findings of water or ice on the moon, this is the first time H2O in its molecular form has been identified in physical samples from a part of the moon previously thought inhospitable for such water. The samples contained a new mineral, ULM-1, which includes 41% water stabilized by ammonia. This discovery could be pivotal for future lunar habitation and is part of China's ambitious space program, which aims to establish a research base on the moon. The finding has sparked excitement and national pride in China, with social media users celebrating the country's scientific achievements and potential for future space exploration. Associated Press, Hiroshima officials have called for urgent action toward nuclear disarmament, emphasizing that it should be treated as a pressing issue rather than a distant ideal. This plea comes as Hiroshima commemorates the 79th anniversary of the atomic bombing that killed 140,000 people. Governor Hidehiko Yuzaki warned that the existence of nuclear weapons ensures their eventual use, while Mayor Kazumi Matsui highlighted the deepening global conflicts that reinforce reliance on military force. Despite Japan's reliance on the U.S. nuclear umbrella, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida pledged to pursue realistic measures for disarmament. Aging survivors, or Hibakusha, continue to advocate for a nuclear arms ban, urging the government to provide more support and ensure their efforts are carried on by future generations. Nikkei Asia reports that Japanese companies are increasingly cautious about operating in China due to supply chain risks, anti-espionage legislation, and rising geopolitical tensions. A survey by Tikoku Databank shows a 9.4% decline in Japanese businesses in China since 2012, despite a slight increase in 2022. Labor costs in China have doubled over the past decade, and US-China tensions have added risks, prompting companies to move operations to Southeast Asia. The largest portion of Japanese firms in China are manufacturers, particularly in cars, electronics, and semiconductors. The arrest of a Japanese employee on espionage charges in 2023 has further heightened concerns about China's opaque legal system. While China remains an attractive market, especially for industries like elder care, a major exodus of Japanese businesses is unlikely, although they are seeking ways to distance themselves without provoking local governments. Al Jazeera reports that separatist fighters in Papua, Indonesia, have killed a New Zealand helicopter pilot, Glenn Malcolm Conning, in a second plane attack. The incident occurred in Alama, a remote village, where the attackers released four indigenous Papuan passengers. The motive for the killing remains unclear, but it follows the 2023 abduction of another New Zealand pilot, Philip Mertens, who remains captive. Conning was an experienced pilot from Motueka, New Zealand. The conflict in Papua, a resource-rich region, has escalated since 2018, with the West Papua National Liberation Army, TPNPB, behind recent attacks. The group demands Papua's independence from Indonesia. Papua, ethnically and culturally distinct from Indonesia, became part of the country in 1969 after a controversial UN-backed referendum. The TPNPB's actions, including designating the region as a restricted zone, 
reflect the ongoing struggle for independence in the region. CNN reports that Cambodia has begun construction on a controversial $1.7 billion canal funded by China, linking Phnom Penh to the sea. The 180-kilometer Phnom Techo Canal aims to reduce shipping costs and reliance on Vietnamese ports. However, environmental concerns and potential impacts on the Mekong River, crucial for millions in six countries, have been raised. Vietnam is worried about the canal's effect on its Mekong Delta rice growing and Cambodia's shift away from Vietnamese ports. The project is seen as an effort to bolster support for Hun Minh who succeeded his father, Hun Sen, as Cambodia's leader. Thousands attended the groundbreaking ceremony, which coincided with Hun Sen's birthday. The canal, jointly built by Chinese and Cambodian companies, will have a 51% Cambodian share. Despite concerns from Vietnam and environmentalists, Cambodia dismisses the potential negative impacts. China's significant influence in Cambodia is evident in numerous Chinese-funded infrastructure projects, with nearly 40% of Cambodia's foreign debt owed to China. Australian Broadcasting Corporation With the next federal election looming by May next year, many voters, particularly from the burgeoning Chinese and South Asian migrant communities, may not be adequately informed to make a sound decision at the polls. Research by Sukmani Karana of UNSW and Fan Yang from the University of Melbourne reveals that about half of the first-generation migrants surveyed lack political literacy, which has paved the way for misinformation to flourish. For instance, before the 2022 federal election, false accusations circulated on WeChat, claiming that Chinese-Australian individuals and news outlets were under investigation for election interference. Similarly, during the 2023 Voice to Parliament referendum, disinformation on WeChat overwhelmingly supported the No campaign, stigmatizing indigenous Australian communities. Minwen Wu, a Chinese-Australian community leader, highlighted the significant gap in understanding among migrants from countries with different political systems, suggesting that the government should integrate civic education into existing free English language programs. Dr. Karana's findings, based on surveys and focus groups with Chinese and South Asian migrants, underscore the need for a more organized approach to civic education. This is crucial as these communities could influence the election outcome in key federal seats. Local initiatives, such as the City of Melbourne's efforts to educate non-citizen residents about voting, demonstrate the potential for early engagement. Dr. Karana advocates for an orientation on the electoral system for new citizens, emphasizing the role of government, media, and community groups in ensuring informed voting decisions. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Got a blue so big and bright Open it and take a flight Learn about the stars and see Everything is here for me